MAST was a huge study, involved over 15,000 people in the United States. What we were looking for was the factors that were associated with something called allodynia. Now, what is allodynia? Think of sunburned skin. When you have a sunburn on your skin, it hurts even when you don't touch it. When you touch it, which shouldn't be painful, it's painful. And when you squeeze it, it really hurts more than it should. So allodynia is really when touch becomes painful. So what we set out to do was in these 15,000 plus people with migraine, we wanted to know what factors are associated with allodynia. What we found was basically three things. The more severe the attacks and the more frequent the attacks, the more likely it is for people to have allodynia. When people overuse acute medicines, whether that's over-the-counter or prescription medicines, they're more likely to have allodynia. And by overuse, I mean using it 10 or more times per month. So when you take something for pain 10 or more times per month, that's what we re refer to as overuse. So people who overuse are more likely to have allodynia with their attacks. And finally, and most potently, depression and anxiety. People who have depression and anxiety are 83% more likely to have allodynia. So what does that mean for doctors? It means that we need to pay attention to those people who are overusing acute treatments. It means that we need to pay attention to those people who have more severe and more frequent attacks and get them on prevention. And it means that we have to start looking for depression and anxiety in our patients, not just addressing the headache or migraine, and treating it and managing that. Because if we do that, we'll reduce the likelihood that they'll have allodynia with their attacks and we'll reduce the likelihood that they'll get worse over time. So that's what MAST, this particular part of the MAST study looked at, and that's why I think it's important. So, you know, the presence of allodynia indicates both the severity of the attack and increases the likelihood that not only will the attack progress and persist, but that more frequent attacks will occur. So someone who has just a few attacks per month, if they're associated with allodynia, they're much more likely to develop chronic migraine over time. If treatments don't work for an acute attack, those patients are much more likely to progress. So allodynia itself is both a marker for non-response to acute treatment and progression over time, and non-response to acute treatment in and of itself, regardless of whether allodynia is present, is also a marker for progression over time. So allodynia is not good. And allodynia is often not actually searched for by doctors in practice. Um, people don't ask the question. Sometimes patients volunteer, but many times they don't because they think, why would the doctor want to know that, number one? And maybe they think I'm just a complainer. Like I'm saying that, you know, it sounds crazy that my glasses hurt on the bridge of my nose or I don't like earrings or necklaces on or I can't stand hot water hitting my head or I can't stand shampooing, combing, or brushing my hair. So you could just simply say, does touch become painful? For, for example, does it hurt to just to brush your scalp? We need to learn about allodynia, why some patients develop allodynia and why some patients don't. Why is it that some people can have attacks, even frequent attacks, and never have allodynia? I mean, what is it about them that makes them different from someone who has allodynia with every single attack. It may be genetic. It may be something else that we're not aware of. I talked about the fact that depression and anxiety and the overuse of acute medicines and frequent attacks are associated, but that doesn't mean it causes it. You see what I mean? There's a difference between an association and causation. So we really need to know what causes allodynia either externally in the environment or internally in our genes. And once we understand better what causes allodynia, then we'll be able to target it and treat it better. So right now, the, what the mass study showed is what's associated with it, and that's helpful. But this was what we call a cross-sectional survey, right? At a point in time, we're asking you uh, a whole bunch of questions and figuring out whether you have allodynia and what's associated with it. We're not really tracking you long-term over time. And we, could, we didn't get to you long ago to know why it is that you developed allodynia. So there's a difference between association and causation, and we really need to know what causes it.
to really, if, so-called getting at the root cause will allow us to fix the problem. 